all right now we have implemented our login page ui now we'll connect our login page with our api all right so we need to connect to api for that we are going to use the http client of course but we are not going to use raw http client we will use refit client for this okay this is a third party library which makes our life easier to implement all these http client calls and all these things we just need to define one interface configure the refit and it will take care of the rest how to send the request how to guys get the response parse it handle errors everything it does automatically for us i already have a couple of videos how can we use refit but yeah so maybe i'll drop links of those videos in the description box you can check those out all right so on this page on this blazer uh, blazing quiz dot web project we are going to Mm, add one new get package that is going to be refit dot http client factory http client factory this one let's install this apply and it is done okay now the way it works we need to define one interface or not one interface we need to define interface for our apis and it uses source code generation for this what we'll do in this web project i'm going to create a folder apis slash here i'll say auth api or i auth api because this is going to be an interface i auth api public interface i auth api in this we just need to define the methods just uh, without any body so our auth api our login api what it gives us it gives us a task of auth response dto right and here we can say login async and what we are going to pass to it it will be a login dto right now this is a simple interface it is not a rapid interface for rapid interface we'll define the http verb on this so this is a post method and in post we need to define the api uh, endpoint url so if we go to our api endpoints auth endpoints here we see this is the url slash api slash auth sorry slash api slash auth slash login so we'll simply use this in here now our rapid interface is ready refit will generate a http client call and everything for this thing it will get this as a parameter it will pass this to that http request body and it will get the response and parse it to auth response dto all these things will be taken care by refit now we need to configure refit because this is the direct path then what is the base url path that we need to explicitly define okay so for this we'll go to our program.cs here we can create a static method static void i am going to call it configure refit okay and this refit we configure it on i service collection so services here we will say services dot add refit client and it is it can have this type of t this generic interface so it should be i auth api okay so this is the basic bare minimum setup inside this we need to right now it is directly using this but it does not know anything about the base url for our api so on this refit we can have this configure http client chained call so this takes one action http client so we can say http client and on this http client we can say http client dot base address this should be the url of our api so for this we'll go to our api and properties launch settings we are using http base profile so this is our base url https localhost 7280 okay so we'll come here 
inside this in this services we can define this const string you can have it in uh, app settings as well for web so here we'll say base api or api base url like this api base url we can provide it here and now our refit is ready for other calls we'll configure it later <coughs> for the the protected api resources where we will need to pro, uh, pass the that jwt token as a authorization header okay that we'll do later but for now for ioth api we are good now we just need to call this before this builder dot build run async here we'll simply say and we are not using this add scoped http client we are not using this so we can remove this and just commenting it out but or maybe let's remove this because we are not using it here we'll simply call configure refit configure refit method and we need to provide service collection so it will be builder dot services now we are good okay now it is injected uh, it is registered in our di we can use this by directly injecting it on our razor page our blazor login dot razor okay let's do this let's inject i auth api i am going to add this using statement but because we are going to use apis on almost each and every laser component so i'm going to move this using statement to underscore import short razor now we have this i auth api i am going to name this auth api now we are good to use this so here instead of this task dot delay it's better to have it in try catch block here we'll say var auth response equals await auth api dot login async and we need to provide login dto which is our underscore model here and now we are good now we will simply check if auth response dot has error this math this computed property which we created it will simply compute it it will check if we have any error or not if there is any error we need to def or show some error message here we can show error alert or let's have some message here only on this page what i'll do i'll simply have a private string the label string underscore error okay and when we have this errors then we'll simply say underscore error equals auth response dot error message and we'll simply return from here without doing anything further in catch block we are going to do something similar so we'll say error equals ex dot message and in finally block we'll simply say underscore is busy equals false so right now it is not busy and we'll remove this is busy from outside of this now if this was successful so here we'll say simply set the login token in some storage and navigate to home page or navigate to some protected page or we can say some protected page okay looks like we are good now let's display this error and yeah when we are coming inside this login first thing we'll do we'll remove this error now we'll check before this login button here we'll simply check if this underscore error is not equals null if that's the case we'll simply have div class mb3 and inside this only we can have maybe uh, mm, 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 yeah maybe let's say bg danger and text to height okay and we can have some spacing as well so p3 or p2 
and here we'll simply display this p at the rate error all right now we are good to try it out okay let's try it out we are here our, our app is loading we are good if we do this these are client side validations for that uh, data annotation validations let's provide something abcd at email.com 12345678 login it is login in and failed to fetch that means there is some error let's quickly see in the console window what is the error so we'll see it is saying i don't know if you can see it let me zoom it this access to fetch this api from origin this 7100 has been blocked by course c o r s cross origin resource sharing policy okay so there is this course error so we can't access any different uh, url domain resource from some different url domain using this front end client side javascript calls basically so we need to enable course on api side so let's quickly go to our api in our program.cs we'll add a course policy so before builder.build here only we'll say builder dot services dot add course and we can have some course options here in this options we can add policies but i'm not going to have different policies we are going to have just simple single policy so we'll use add default policy using add policy you can have named policies for me default policy is more than enough here we have this policy and we can configure this policy here so p dot we can say all these things also allow any origin allow any header allow any method you can add a lot of things here but we are not going to allow all the domains we want to make our api secure which should be accessible from our ui only okay so instead of allow any origin we want to allow our web ui origin so for that we need to know what is our web ui origin we can have it as a constant string here or maybe we can have it as app settings let's do the app settings way so in our app settings or development.json here i'm going to have one more key here i'll say allowed origins okay and right now our ui is this local 7100 i'm going to use this if you have multiple you can have here only so you can maybe comma separated semicolon separated space separated it's up to you because we are going to use this and parse this thing maybe tomorrow i want to uh, deploy it somewhere for example let's say i'll deploy it on uh, blazing quiz dot <laughs> blazing quiz dot dot com maybe i don't know i'll see if i can deploy it here so https colon colon blazing quiz dot dot com so i'm separating it using comma i'll use this i just want to show you how to do this and how to handle multiple domains and all these things here allowed origins let's go to program.cs and here this is in app settings we can access this from our builder dot configuration inside is that default policy we'll say what allowed origins equals builder dot configuration dot get value this is going to be of type string here we'll say this allowed origins this is the key now this is allowed origins string and after this we can have our uh, allowed origins equals so allowed origins str dot split 
because we are going to split it on the basis of this comma so comma now we can have this space here or maybe after this or maybe we can have some false commas so it should ignore this thing so for this we are going to use the flags string split options here the first thing we are saying string split options dot trim entries and because this enum is a flag so we can have multiple next thing we'll say string split options dot remove empty entries so trim the entries remove trailing and leading spaces and then remove if the entry is empty that means there were two direct commas without anything so it should ignore these basically now we have this array of string in allowed origins now instead of this allow any origin in p we'll say p dot with origins inside this we can pass param string array origins so we are going to pass this thing here now our course is ready now we just so this is complaining about it but we are good okay if it throws some error because it shouldn't be empty you can have some uh, validation logic on startup this should be there but i'm not going to add it here so add course now we just need to use it in here maybe after http redirection we'll say use course which is default policy i'm not going to use any named policy i'm not using it so just default policy so just app dot use course and we are good let's try it out now auth login let's add abcd at gmail.com and some password logging in invalid username because this does not exist now let's say what was the admin at gmail.com right incorrect password this is also coming from api which is good then we have this password so let's add the correct password and let's open up the inspect window so that we can see what response we are getting and i'll say login logging in and there is no error that means this request was successful if we go to the network if we check what we got payload we pass this and if we say response we got token and error message which is null and token is this so we successfully got this token from the api so that means our login is working and our app is able to connect to the api all right uh where is our login dot tracer i'll close all other things cool we are good with this setup right now we have successfully connected our login page with our api now next thing we'll see what we'll do or maybe let's quickly do this let at least move it to home page then we'll change where we are navigating it so for this i'm going to inject navigation manager and i'm going to call it navigation manager only and in here when we are here we'll say navigation manager dot navigate to and it could be anything the slash the home page basically let's quickly run it and it should navigate to home page that we'll see quickly auth login admin at gmail.com one two three four five six login and we are on home page okay that thing is working cool the next thing we just need to set the login token in some storage and we need to implement our auth state provider implement auth state provider these things we need to do next so we'll use custom this authentication state provider and authentication related stuff in our blazor web assembly application